SLM policy, service level management. In SLM, we see it as an SLM statement. We have three SLM statements. called throttle notify and shape these are the three different SLM statements what we have with respect to our data power appliance throttle for example let's say you have kept it as 100 transactions per second let's assume that your throttle limit that you have kept is 100 transactions per second so which means your service is capable of handling 100 transactions within one second correct now what if I receive more than 100 transactions per second let's say I am receiving around 102 or 105 transactions per second so which means you got two extra transactions over here correct those extra transactions what you received will be automatically rejected or throttled by your data power that means throttle is your maximum limit beyond which even if you receive a single request within the same interval all those requests is going to be rejected by data power okay throttle whereas notify if you have kept your notify has for example let's say 80 transactions per second when this limit is reached it will just send a notification in the logs to the client but it will not reject any message see notify will not reject any message at any point of time it will just sends a notification in the logs whereas the throttle is going to reject the message beyond the configuration what you did okay throttle and notify and in real time we use both because see I cannot directly go ahead and reject my client's message so I have to notify him first and then I am going to throttle it and usually notify will be set to a little lower limit compared to a throttle limit so if your throttle is around 100 transactions per second you can have your notify around 70 or 80 transactions so when that limit is reached your consumer will get a notification in the logs saying that we are about to reach a maximum of 100 transactions which is your throttle limit okay followed by shape let's say you have a very high priority message that is coming up and at any cost you should not lose that message you want to process it so in that case we use shape shape will not reject any message and it will only queue or save those messages so that it can be processed at a later point of time shape will not reject any message instead it will queue or save those messages so that it can be processed at a later point of time and how many number of such transactions your shape can save that is 2500 beyond 2500 even shape will not be able to process any message by saving it okay throttle notify and shape throttle is maximum limit beyond which even if you receive a single request within that particular interval all those requests is going to be rejected shape sorry notify notify will not reject any message instead it just sends a notification in the logs to the client whereas shape shape will not reject any message even if you receive a high number of transactions within a specified interval of time those transactions are going to be queued or saved and it will be processed at a later point of time so the maximum number of messages that it can save and process it at a later point of time is 2500 so beyond 2500 if you are still receiving the request all those requests will be rejected by data power even though if you have kept it as a shape 
beyond 2500 all the messages will be deleted okay now if you want to see the configuration just drag and drop this slm action onto the rule and just double hit on this so every processing action if you want to configure it you have to double hit on that action after dropping onto the rule so i'll just hit on this slm action you can see even that will take your service name into consideration it will create global weather underscore wsp just edit to see what it is you can see there is an option called main and a statement go to statement here you can see there is an option to add an slm statement just hit on that add button the first field in this slm statement configuration is identifier identifier is nothing but just an integer to identify the order of the statements let's say this is the first statement i'm going to create i'll give it as one user annotation is nothing but username or anything that you want to give as a comment let's say user sorry slm for throttle followed by you can see there is this slm action you can just select it from the drop down list like notify shape and throttle see when you choose it as a throttle these are all the default uh, like slm statements which are already present so if you select it as a throttle and if you want to see what it does you can see edit this throttle let's edit that it will show you the definition of the throttle means you can see when this throttle is SLM action is throttle, it is going to reject the message. Similarly, if you want to check it for notified, you can see that log only. So throttle is going to reject the message, notify is going to log. And when you look into the shape, what it does, can see queue the next 2500 transactions for later transmission when the monitored entity is within conformance levels after queuing 2500 transaction discard subsequent transactions so beyond 2500 if you want to have process it by saving it it will not be done so 2500 is the maximum limit beyond which even your shape will not be able to process a request and hence the messages are going to be rejected or discarded Okay. Here, choose your SLM. What is the, yeah. what is the limit of data power? I mean, it's... Like, how many data. transactions it so, process? Yes. No, there is no such limit, actually. It can process it. Because we use multiple appliances using a load balancer, right? Yeah. So, the, whatever the load that comes will be equally distributed among the existing appliances, so it doesn't affect. So, that's the reason, based upon the incoming traffic that you have to handle, you can have a number of appliances being used. See, my project, we had like 16 data power appliances in production. Okay. So, earlier it was 4, then the traffic was more, they, they moved to 8, and again the traffic was more, so they moved it to 16. So, when I say 16, whatever the configuration that you do it on data power appliance 1 should be replicated similarly on all the remaining 15 data power appliances. Yes. So that every time when the request comes because it is the load balancer who is going to decide to which appliance it has to send the transaction details. Right. So automatically that appliance is going to take care of that load. So depending upon that load we can decide how many number of appliances we need to have it in our enterprise architecture. Okay, is there any monitoring tool like Wiley for data power? Yes, in order to monitor, we can use IT CAM. IT CAM? IT CAM, yes. Or you can use a Tivoli okay. as well. IBM Tivoli Application Manager. Okay. This we can use it in order to monitor these uh, objects at the data power. Okay. Okay. Or if you want to use for logging, you can use Splunk. 
Jafar Lugs. Lugs, yes. Okay. So for here, you will choose. You'll give an identifier. You'll use the user annotation. You'll choose an SLM action followed by threshold interval and threshold type. You can see here threshold interval length for how many seconds? Let's say one second. Threshold level is 60, for example, which means 60 transactions per second. Or if you want, 60 transactions per minute. So you can change these values depending upon the need. So today, if your consumer is saying that they are going to send around 60 transactions per minute, you can keep that. So tomorrow, if they come back to you and say that the number of customers are increased and hence the traffic will be more for 60 to 100, you have to change this value to 100. Only in that case, your messages are going to be processed. Okay. So just hit up apply. So here you can see once after you apply, you can see 60 transactions per minute. Similarly, you can add another statement. You can see that you can have multiple statements. Just hit on add and you can choose it over here like the similar configuration. User identifier, user annotation and the SLM action. Since you configured for notify, you can go with the throttle and you can set the threshold interval length and threshold interval limit. Okay, and again, so you can see you can control the execution of these statements. Whether you want all the statements to be executed or whether you want to stop the processing, you can do it from the main tab. You can see here, evaluation method, execute all statements. So which means even when you have a notify throttle, everything will be taken into consideration and every condition will be verified. But when you choose it as terminate at first action, so either notify or throttle, whatever reaches the condition first, that will be executed. You can see here. Evaluation method, when you cho choose it as terminate at first action, the policy stops processing any statement after the first control procedure, that is after an SLM reject or a notify is met. Whereas when you keep it as first reject, the policy stops processing any element after the first rejection. Whereas when you keep it as execute all statements, it will execute all statements regardless of any action of a statement. So it's always better to go with execute all statements. So that it will execute, it will check for the notify condition as well, it will check for the throttle condition as well, and if you have kept a shape, even that will be verified. So if you keep it as a first action, so either of these, like if, it's a, if it is a notify, or shape or throttle, whichever meets the condition first, that will be executed. So better to go with execute all statements. Clear? SLM, throttle, notify and shape. Yes, any questions? More than that. Okay. So I'll stop here. So we still have other actions to discuss. See, we just discussed only a match, AAA and an SLM. So we are yet to discuss all these actions, sign, verify, validate, transformation,